or not, but there was a time where developers were willing to do something unique with their IPs. I know, right? What kind of prehistoric time was that? Everything has to be so safe now that would definitely be unheard of for something like this to happen again. While devs are certainly taking more risks nowadays, their established IPs tend to typically stay the same throughout their lives. Rewind a couple decades and we have Bomberman Hero, a game that was a bold new direction for the... White... Bomber? What started as a 3D entry in the Bonk franchise somehow became a 3D entry in the Bomberman franchise and it was dimensions different from what came before. Gone was the flat grid gameplay and gone was the bomb laying and bomb kicking. Okay, those got to stay. Drastically changing things can often alienate your fan base, see Castlevania 64, but can also pull new people in. Of course, it's always worth applauding developers trying something new, but should we really be clapping for failures? Is Bomberman Hero a blast we should cheer on, or is the only hero around here the one who turns the game off for you? Bomberman Hero stars the titular Bomberman as he is just existing before Star Wars happens. No joke. A little robot by the name of Peabot and a princess named Princess Million have escaped an attack by an evil empire with a mysterious disc. A disc that the empire wants. Sounds awfully familiar, huh? Peabot escapes with the disc while the princess is captured by the evil Garadin Empire. Thankfully, Peabot makes his way to Bomberman and alerts him of this vague threat. Bomberman leaps into action and, while well, things do sort of happen, that is pretty much it. The story is all fairly simple and doesn't add or take anything away, much like stories outside RPGs in general at the time. As mentioned, this Bomberman game is dimensions different from the prior games in the franchise. While this isn't the first 3D game the Bomber Boy has starred in, that would be Bomberman 64 prior, this is the first game where he has the ability to jump freely. Yes, that's right, Bomberman Hero is a 3D platformer, and a rather unique one at that. The game is divided into worlds, which are divided into areas, which are divided into stages. There are five worlds, each with three areas, which range from four to about seven stages. The goal of each stage is to simply make it to the exit. How you accomplish that may differ level by level, some simply require you to walk in while others may require you to collect four little crystals, but the goal is to find the exit all the same. While this may be simple, Barman being Barman makes getting there a bit different than in other games. This is all thanks to the general feel of the game and how Barman himself acts. As his name suggests, Barman's mean of attacking his adversaries is by tossing bombs at them. While this may sound kind of normal, and in theory it is, things get a tad more difficult when you realize that you need to either hit the enemies directly, or land the bomb in such a way that the explosion itself hits them. It's actually a very different feeling. Throwing things with a set trajectory that can be influenced by jumping and running is a very limiting means of attack rather than simply jumping or outright attacking things. This will come across doubly so when you notice that you can only throw one bomb at a time, and the explosion from said bomb is rather puny. Well, never fear, as you collect bomb and flame power-ups that allow you to throw up to four bombs at once and make your explosion bigger. How thoughtful of the Empire just leave those lying around for you. Of course, fear wells up inside your heart when you notice just how slippery the handling can be. Bomberman slides all about the place and doesn't stop as soon as he lands. Just like Mario, he'll retain some of his momentum. This is where the challenge in the platforming comes from, as you may just slide off that tricky jump you made. It's not too bad, thankfully, as Bomberman will also grab onto ledges, but it can get a little scary. But wait, there's more! Even more fear wells up inside your heart when you notice that you can hurt yourself with your own explosions. Now, I know this makes sense, as Link can also do that, but who ever heard of someone hurting themselves with their own basic attacks? Thankfully, if you play carefully, it won't be a problem, but when you panic and spaz out like I do often, you will claim some of your own life. It doesn't help that your health doesn't recover between levels, which is an odd decision to be sure. 
Other than all that, you can still set bombs down, which can be useful for dropping bombs on unsuspecting enemies below you, or for laying traps for pursuing enemies, or for laying on switches as you run to whatever platform or object they control. This is even more limited than your throwing trajectory, and the kicking part of the bombs is only used in specific locations. This felt like they needed to put it in to be Bomberman rather than something useful. Each level has things to collect as well, not just enemies to kill, but these things just boil down to points and power-ups for the vast majority. Gems increase your score, with different gems offering more points, and reaching a certain score threshold will give you a good rating when completing a level. This is more for completionists than anything tangible, however. Each world ends with a boss, like you'd expect, but they aren't the most interesting things to fight. They just boil down to hitting them in a specific way while avoiding their onslaught. Nothing too engaging about them. Overall, however, the basic gameplay is fun and unique. It's a pity the majority of the challenge comes from your own hand, but it do be like that sometimes. It's not every day that a developer manages to make a Friday the 13th arching weapon fun, but they somehow did here. Outside of plain Jane jumping and tossing stages, there are also vehicular stages for you to commit some vehicular bombings. These stages consist of attaching some form of propulsion to Bomberman, and are auto-scrolling sort of stages where your goal is to just survive, though exceptions do exist. These attachments consist of a jet, a submarine, a helicopter, and a snowboard, and each one controls a bit differently. The jet and submarine are fairly similar, with the major difference being the environment around you, but the helicopter and snowboard are the most different. The helicopter has more freedom, even having the ability to go back and forth, and usually wants an objective to complete the levels. Meanwhile, the snowboard is a miserable experience and only used a few times, thankfully. The snowboard can only jump and do a spin, and this is your primary means of attack. It feels atrocious. The others aren't too fun either, with their controls being a bit too limiting and their means of attack being a bit too unreliable, with the jet and sub relying on a crappy homing bomb, and the chopper relying on dropping bombs on things. Every time one of these showed up, I sighed. I just wanted to jump around, bro. They aren't used enough to drag the experience down too much, but boy would I rather not. This game is friggin' weird looking. The environments, as well as enemies and such, make very little sense. Environments consist of platforms and objects that are just there to be there, on top of whatever theme the world is going for. The enemies consist of whatever random thing or shape they could come up with and could program to kill. There isn't a lot of consistency in the style or design outside of its lack of consistency. If I wanted to name the art direction, I would call it Video Game. The only consistent stages you'll find are the vehicle ones, since they don't include platforming, and they are also just as weird. Granted, this is a Nintendo 64 game, so it's fair for things to not make a ton of sense, but this is the generation where developers started to put a bit more care into the world they were designing. Even games that take place in things like paintings or contrived zones have more consistency and style than this. Regardless, things look good enough quality-wise, even if performance suffers from chronic early 3D disease, and the music is downright bizarre and unique. This soundtrack is so strange that I can't help but love it, even if they start reusing tracks fairly early. It's also kind of strange that Bomber Man doesn't sound too much like a Bomber Man, more like a Bomber Boy. While the presentation isn't perfect, the soundtrack more than makes up for the odd visual style. Bomber Boy is still a bit jarring, however.
When the fuse burns down and the dust settles from the accidental explosion you caused on your last sliver of life, Bomberman Hero remains a fun and unique experience. An experience that is heavily marred by a weird art design, clumsy execution of combat, and subpar vehicle levels. While that may sound like a lot, the excellent music and generally fun gameplay do make up for it. If only your bombs didn't hurt you, this would be a much more recommended game, but it's still one that I suggest both retro fans and fans of 3D platformers give a try. It's a one-of-a-kind game, and the out-of-pocket Star Wars story and self-destructive tendencies the game has don't ruin it at all. On the Does It Hold Up scale, I give this one a cautious yeppers, and I award it a 6 out of 10. If only the Bomber Boy was given the chance to become a true Bomber Man, I think we could have had something special on our hands. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, why not like, comment, and subscribe? It'll help the channel grow and light a fire under me, getting me to make more of these reviews. I would love to hear your opinion on either the video or the game in the comments below. I'll be doing more retro reviews and we'll be doing some Let's Plays, so why not check back from time to time? Until next time!